The back of schools are heading into their final short break before the last leg of an extremely unusual academic year. But as the lockdown regulations were lifted, many learners did not have much to go back to. A large number of schools were vandalized during lockdown. And then there are those who just don't have proper infrastructure, like classrooms. One such school is the Amasango Korea School in Makanda. The school, one of three Similar schools in the province caters for children who are victims of abuse or have been abandoned by their parents. And the schools operate from six shipping containers supplied by the Eastern Cape Department of Education after the, a 2010 court ruling that it must build a proper school. Part of the court order was to supply temporary structures. A new school is yet to be built. Larato Fakisi has more on this story. This is not just a school. Without it, life on the streets is all these learners have. The school accommodates 106 pupils from grade 1 to grade 7. In March 2010, the Department of Education committed to build a new school in the same year. Two weeks later, the Department of Education objected to the court order, saying its attorneys were not authorized to enter into that agreement. The entire school community is affected by the legal wrangling and delays. I would really love that we get a proper school. It's so hard when we have to practice for a sporting game because we don't have fields to train on. Most of the time we lose our games because we are not prepared. The girls that play netball are also struggling because there is no court for them to practice. We want a better school. When we miss the transport, we are forced to walk through that bushy area, which is not safe at all, especially for our schools. The playing area is very small. We need practicing fields for sport. There is also a leaking drain very close to the school that smells so bad and is not good for our health. The lack of sports grounds is also an issue. When my grandson and I speak, he always says that he wishes that his school could be like other schools, where they can have playing fields and be able to train like other pupils, so that when they go and play against other schools, they have practice enough on their fields. He always says, Mom, I wish we could get better playing fields, especially for us who love soccer. The school provides an occupational technical curriculum. With more space and proper infrastructure, more pupils can be enrolled. Definitely it will improve the results of the school and our efforts to assist our learners to succeed. Because if we can have a proper school building, that building will cater for the skills side, occupational uh, technical curriculum, because we will expand that. Even at the moment, we do have uh, equipment for a saloon, but we don't have a classroom to put those. We have not started that one. So the beadwork, the sewing um, and craft work, we are doing that in one building. And then pottery in another building. So we, we, we really have limited space as soon as we can get a proper school building then we'll be able to cater for such children who cannot access the normal curriculum. Land for the proposed school has been identified but it's bound to be a cumbersome process. Most recently um, it looks like there is no option but to again approach the court um, to direct that the department fulfill their obligations. Um, the Department of Human Settlements was not a party to the original court proceedings, therefore it's necessary for us to probably join them in the, uh, well it will be necessary for us to join them in the next round of litigation. Obviously we would really like to avoid going back to court to enforce something which is such a, a clear breach of the children's light, uh, right to education and to learn in an environment with dignity. Um, 
So we are hoping that the Department and the Department of Human Settlements will come to their senses and take the necessary steps to make the land available. The CMC office in, in Makanda has had meetings with the, with the SUP and the local community and they, they are working out, trying to work as speedily as possible to find a solution to this matter so that indeed the land can be transferred formally to, to the school so that we, they can take it from there. Ten years after the court ruling, pupils and teachers are still waiting. Despite the odds, the hunger for knowledge, insatiable. Lerat Ofekisi, SABC News, Makanda. Lerato, thank you very much indeed for that report. I want to bring in now Abongile Yankees, who's live for us in the Eastern Cape, to talk more about the difficulties learners still have to face over the next two months. Abongile, very good morning to you. What's the current situation on the ground? Yes, good morning to you too, Blaine. Well, coming to you from a school in, uh, in Dujua, here in the Eastern Cape, where um, preparations are underway for tomorrow's paper. They are writing life orientation, the matrix here. Well, the Eastern Cape is saddled with infrastructure backlogs, and um, the lockdown did have a, a, another effect on them. Well, but to tell us more, Blaine, I'm now joined by the MEC for Education in the Eastern Cape, Mr. Fundile Gade. A very good morning, MEC. Um, kindly tell us about the infrastructural backlogs here in the Eastern Cape. Thanks. Uh, good, uh, good morning, um, SAPC viewers. And uh, we have tried our level best to ensure that we level up the ground uh, because we knew that when the examinations and assessment kicks in, uh, we'll be expected to respond to the regulations as uh, defined through COVID-19. We have managed to ensure that we live to the expectations of the regulation in the context of a, a one meter a social distance and uh, also create a, some pool of avenues uh, for us to make sure that the kids uh, are able to get more access in the examination rooms. We have um, been able to source uh, more than 240 community halls where we have got shortages of classes um, because uh, we would understand that at the time of the examinations also we must respond to other grades that uh, in the main have not yet been uh, finalized their own uh, curriculum activities. But key to that is to ensure that we don't lower the standards of the province and uh, also ensure that the trends and uh, projections that we've made during the course of the academic year is indeed uh, of great deal to us to ensure that we don't fail the kids. Just this week, um SABC News brought uh, eight, two stories on um, infrastructural backlogs, uh, um, complaints about proper schools. Now that there was COVID-19 for five months, um, with the lockdown, um, like construction couldn't take place. And you've, you say you've sourced, but how much of an impact now that the infrastructural problems have added due to the lockdown? The differentiation timetables uh, that were agreed at the level of the cabinet have actually given us a space uh, because um, it allows us to have a rotational um, approach on the curriculum activism. Um, others come uh, for a week and go back. Others come for, for, for platooning uh, using the very same institution. But others use the very same hybrid. Uh, because of the numbers of the learners that are not that much of a threat uh, in terms of the differentiation uh, timetables that we have. We, 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 are, we are quite sure that, um, yes, of course, it is a crisis. Um, we probably need more than 70 billion rands for us to uh, conclude the matter of infrastructure in the province. But from where I am seated, uh, part of the solutions that we are busy working on them now uh, for the next academic years, not for this uh, examination, is on how we master the art and skill 
uh, of rationalization, uh, alignment and measure of schools so that we don't have small unviable schools in the province because they do have a very negative uh, output in terms of the quality of the results. So the sooner we have got fewer but bigger schools uh, in the province, the better for the output and also the quality of the results of the province so that we can balance up um, the interaction and time between the learners and the teachers and the quality of, 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 of what is happening in the classroom environment. Well, um, the preparations for the exams, um, um, earlier on this year you aimed for an 80% pass rate. With COVID-19, is that still a possibility with so much lost time? Uh, between me and you, uh, we are still resolute on that uh, for two reasons. One, we have made our own uh, scientific analysis of the performance of the learners of the province, uh, in grade 12 in particular, comparing them with the previous one. We picked up that uh, this cohort uh, of 2020 has an edge of 8.9 percent than the previous one in terms of the ability um, contending um, the challenges uh, confronted by the academic progression. That's one. So they have got a bit of an edge than the ones that have passed with, 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 with high, uh, with high uh, uh, colors last year. But the other thing which is an advantage for this cohort is that they have been able to access the e-learning solution, which others didn't have. Um, and also the calendar uh, that has been altered uh, via the minister's instruction has also given them space to prepare thoroughly um, for, the, for the academic final examinations. So we are going to get that 80%. And uh, also, if you look to the output of subjects as, as, as they are concluding now uh, the trial examinations, um, for example, in this district, uh, if I can just mention an example, um, the business studies um, has been concluded, the marking. They have been able to push up to 90% on business studies on this one, on, on this district. Uh, something that is quite a bit strange because if you look to the business studies across the country last year, it was one of the killer subjects and has been failed on a number of districts uh, in the country. So it was a bit strange for me that they have been able to make up to 90% as a district on the business studies, mm. indicating that there is uh, everything uh, that you would require as a citizen out of these uh, learners that we have this year. Let me see. And for, uh, you are saying that, but there are still complaints that um, shortages of teachers um, some didn't come back. Uh, during uh, the cabinet briefing, you mentioned that um, some learners didn't come back from due. Some had fallen pro pregnant. Some, uh, some, some have lost their lives, and uh, some teachers have lost their lives. But in these schools, are teachers still enough to teach them for this year? If there is any plan that the province have developed in the context of the interventions that we have made, uh, you remember that we have got a wall-to-wall -wall plan as a province wherein we cluster schools uh, through the centers. The advantage of that is that they then access the best teachers across. Uh, they don't utilize uh, the normal uh, educators or teachers from their various schools. Let's hold it there for now, MCR. Yes. Well, Blen, we we'll want to bring you more on this story on education, but for now, um, still on education-related matters, learners, learners accompanied by their parents and teachers from Tinguevu Senior Secondary School in Kofimbamba are also demanding a proper school. They held a picket at the department's headquarters in Zuelicha last week. They are demanding that the department should deliver on its five-year promise for a proper school. Our reporter, Yanga Funani, compiled this report. Teaching and learning compromised. These learners have to share school premises with a local primary school. They've been waiting for five years. 
the provincial education department is yet to deliver. The main reason why I'm here, we want classes. We have been crying, bleeding, wanting houses, wanting classes, but there is nothing, there is no response to that. I am angry and sad because of this government of South Africa. It's, it's been years we've been pleading and begging to them. We want classes, we demand classes, we need better education like those learners stay in the urban areas. Parents want better education for their children. We want MEC CAT to provide temporary structures while we wait for the proper school. Our learners are congested in small rooms. 11, 84, or grade 9. The department cites budget constraints. The department is uh, under serious constraints in terms of budgetary constraints, um, and that is an issue that we have to consider. With all of the backlog that we have, I mean, that still stands at over 73 billion rands. So those issues have been put on the table, um, but we, we, we both acknowledge each other's points, and yeah, we will, we will continue to work with them to find a solution. The Provincial Education Department has promised the school 10 prefab structures next year. It is not yet clear as to when they will provide a permanent structure. This as the department has received a 2 billion rand budget cut. Young Afunani, SABC News in Tofimvaba. Well, as, I, as we continue our conversation, MEC, um, there's this thorny issue of these tablets. Some are still questioning um, the, the, the feasibility of it and the amount that uh, is almost uh, close to, uh, it's half a billion if I, if I can put it like that. You were set to procure 55,000 learners, 550,000 tablets. Um, is it that still, in, with much criticism on them, is it still um, what you're saying is it was the right way? No, from where we are seated, we, we don't have an issue with the e-learning solution, um, primarily because uh, our attitude is that um, the court battle between the department and the and CETA uh, is not about the price per se now, when I was reading the papers on Friday, uh, going back to the court uh, on Grahamstown on the 20th. It's about us purchasing uh, the e-learning solution via CETA. You would remember that CETA has written to all the departments, uh, government departments, uh, about these regulars that they are incapable of discharging their own task. And on the basis of that, uh, provincial government departments have actually get into that space and uh, enhance uh, the e-learning solution in particular in education. So it's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting battle legally. Uh, what does it mean uh, for us to, 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 to constrain um, the learners on the basis of us not agreeing tactically on how to, should we have procured? Because um, from the very same interdict that they brought to us uh, two weeks back, they are not raising issues of corruption, they are not raising issues of uh, malicious practice. They are not raising issues of procurement, but raising a matter of principle that the ICT infrastructure in the country should be brought through CETA in, in the context of the regulation. Yes, of course, we agree on with them on that, but the issue is they themselves have said they are incapable of doing their own talk. Um, let's talk to another thorny issue. Uh PPE corruption, um, a number of investigations have been, have been uh, conducted in various departments. In your department, uh, someone was arrested in, at a, uh, the Hawk seized some, some items at a house in King Williamstown, the, which is related to, the, to, to your department. What can you say about corruption in your department? We, 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 we are quite pleased with the work that has been done by the SIU. Uh, in the context of ensuring that we have got efficient um, uh, governance. Um, so we were, of course, expecting that there could be uh, some elements of, 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 of deviations uh, from a, a, a principle. 
but uh, we are happy with the outcomes uh, because in fact even the official that has been uh, taken by the SIU and the Hawks by now is a matter that relates between them as a family uh, which they themselves disagree. Uh, of course, um, cautiously we are aware that uh, the officials should have not utilized um, companies uh, that are related to her. But uh, because of the systems that have been put in place by the provincial treasury uh, and the department uh, itself, we have been able to pick it up and uh, by now she has already resigned. Uh, we are busy processing now uh, matters relating to uh, DC uh, so that we can finalize that matter from, 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 from a department's point of view and then allow uh, the state law agencies to deal with the, the matters of criminality. There are fears of a second wave and um, PPEs at schools. There was this debacle about at Makaula school in 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 the area in, in there was the school you we both know the school Makaula what happened 98 percent of of learn, 98 children um, learners got um, infected due to due to the due to the company not receiving not bringing PPE sanitizers that are worth 70 percent alcohol you said that you were going to you were going to take the matter to the to the police how far is that now. The department has actually investigated the matter and uh, taken those substances into um, the lab. And indeed, uh, the results have actually come back uh, that indeed uh, the service provider has defrauded the state. And our legal team is on top of that case now uh, because we wanted to be sure that indeed uh, the country is confronted with a high level of greed um, which, uh, the, the which uh, officials of government including ourselves uh, must be able to defend uh, the destitutes of this country uh, in defense of the, of, the, of, the, of the maximization of profit and, and the high level of greed because I took an exception uh, that uh, somebody out of the crisis of COVID-19, death at, at its own toll, you can just uh, mingle up and uh, make uh, such kind of a behavior which makes a risk, not about only the learners, but the entire communities uh, that might be affected on the basis of one learner being affected. Because understand the COVID is, is, is one of those uh, viruses that easily spread when an individual has been infected. So we have tightened up now uh, in terms of the planning for the second wave. Uh, our schools are quite a bit ready, but my greatest concern with the MEC for, for health uh, is the relaxation um, which we have just observed, um, made of course by the ill discipline, if you like, of the communities from the recent outbreaks that we have experienced. Because we picked up that these uh, tournaments, uh, taverns, social gatherings, are at the heartbeat of these outbreaks. So in essence it means Department of Health can be extraordinary burden, overburdened by such kind of behavior if we don't arrest it, uh, not just as a provincial but also as national government. Because remember, uh, in as much as these are provincial schools, but there are kids that come outside of the province uh, because of the boarding facilities that we have in the province. So when we talk about a, a comprehensive COVID-19 plan and interventions, we mu it must be overarching, uh, cut across provinces, so that you can be able to secure even those that comes outside of the borders of the Eastern Cape. And you see, um, lastly, the cocktail has approved that the summer initiation should go ahead. Don't you think that will give stress to the learners, especially, particularly these boys who are set to undergo initiation in their academic work? Don't you think that will, it will have a, a negative impact since they'll be going initiation this year? 
No, we, we have been, we have been both um, education, COCTA, social development and health. We have been part of that uh, committee that deals with the preparation, um, in particular for the initiation. In the province, uh, initiation is one of the key uh, cultural activities uh, which uh, we must contend with. Um, but I'm happy with the uh, resolution uh, that have been taken also at the, at the level of the National Command Center. That provincial government must monitor that very closely uh, using the stakeholders that are involved at that particular level. So my, 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 my finger is that we, we might not have that much of a problem, uh, especially if um, we can be able to be resolute on those that have been given responsibility uh, to monitor and manage uh, the initiation schools uh, at that particular level, get a very close look um, at the health standards, uh, not compromise regulations on the basis of a cultural basis. Uh, so I, I don't think we, are, we, we, we might be worried about that at, at that moment. Unless in the recent uh, weeks to come, because we are expecting a second wave, then there could be another analysis uh, from scientifically from the health department. Then we can be advised uh, accordingly. I thank you so much for your time, sir. Thanks so much. Eh? Well, that was the MEC for Education in the Eastern Cape Plain. We discussed the various um, pointers which, are, which affect the department. Well, they are optimistic that they will get the 80% pass rate amidst these challenges that they are facing. Well, from us here in Dujwa, myself, Abongile Yankis, and my colleague, Agobile Vena, it's back to you in studio. Yeah, great reporting, Abongile, dealing with a raft of issues in the province. And one of the issues you mentioned was COVID-19 and the fear of a second wave the eastern cape numbers so far cumulative cases uh 91,821 with regards to fatalities 3,421 recoveries 86,927 that's the latest numbers we have we'll, we'll let go uh, of uh, abungila thank you very much indeed for your reporting sir so you know everything goes to putting in place measures in order to put paid to a second wave you see what's happening in europe what's happening in france curfews lockdowns, etc etc it all goes back to what we have been told five six months ago with regards to what happens what what helps in a situation like this those health protocols that they they talk about the three w's wash your hands wear a mask and watch your distance not complete prophylaxis in as you know individually but it helps in terms of lowering the numbers flattening the curve as you've heard many many times all right abangila yankees there and the team appreciate your reporting